All right, good morning. Uh, this is uh, chapter two, lecture 2B on velocity, uh, motion, and acceleration in one direction, whether it's horizontally or vertically. Uh, this is where we picked up, ended last time. Again, velocity, position versus time graph. The slope is a velocity. For a velocity versus time graph, the slope is the acceleration. We define velocity as a change of distance over change of time. Acceleration is change of velocity over change of time. And such, and we define acceleration as positive if it's going to the right, and negative if acceleration is to the left. Does not mean it's slowing down if the acceleration is negative. So, So we'll continue on here. All right. So there's a concept of negative acceleration, just to abbreviate, and uh, deceleration. All right. Uh, negative acceleration means it's the acceleration is negative, such as minus five meters per second uh, squared, which would mean the acceleration would be to the left or horizontal or downwards if we're doing vertically, such as gravity is g is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. All right. Deceleration, on the other hand, is an uh, object that object say uh, that is slowing down. All right. So, um, as an example. Let's say a negative accelerate before we do this one. Say we have an object going to the left with a velocity of minus five meters per second squared, uh, minus five meters per second, and the acceleration is minus two meters per second squared. <clears throat> All right, this would be exactly comparable to if you have a velocity of five meters per second in the positive direction an acceleration of two meters per second squared in a positive direction. In this case, what it's going to be doing is then V would be V naught plus A times T. So that'd be minus five plus uh, negative two times one, which would be minus seven meters per second. So every second it's gaining negative velocity in that direction is negative five just like it would be positive five after one second, T is one second, <clears throat> velocity would be seven meters per second, and so on. Uh, object slowing down, on the other hand, would be when it's actually slowing down. The only time that occurs is if, say, V is positive, such as, say, V is five meters per second, and the acceleration is opposite, <clears throat> negative five meters, two meters per second squared. So V would be five plus negative two times one, which would be three meters per second. Likewise, this other way. <clears throat> so we have V is going that way, but the acceleration is actually positive this would be five, minus five plus two, that would be minus three meters per second squared. So when the acceleration velocity are opposite signs, that's when the object slows down. Not whether the acceleration is negative or positive, but the ex acceleration is negative, is opposite that. Uh, another example of that in the vertical direction is, <clears throat> G 
which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, but for purposes of how I like to do problems, I use minus 10 meters per second squared because it's very close to that. So see, I throw a ball upwards with a velocity of V is plus uh, 20 meters per second, right? The acceleration is G, which is minus 10 meters per second squared. What happens to the ball? All right, <clears throat> so we plot it. We'll figure it out with time. If T is zero, using our equation, V is V naught plus AT, which would be, you know, V naught, we call this G, V naught plus GT, because that's G. For T, um, V would be um, 20 meters per second. For one second, it would be 10 meters per second. Uh, at t equals two seconds, it would now be zero. <clears throat> Doesn't mean it's the acceleration is zero. Then it would start going back downwards. So we see it slowing down. Then it'll start going in the opposite direction. In that case, it will start to accelerate downwards faster and faster because now both v and a are in the same direction and so on. Uh, v would be minus 20 meters per second, and so on. All right, so basically it would show this type of a motion. We go in time, and if we plotted acceleration, velocity versus time, velocity versus time for this particular situation. Uh, if this is zero, we would start at 20, minus 20 and it would do something like that, where at t equals two seconds, it would be zero, and so on. And then it would be then, and the slope of this graph would be minus 10 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration, the slope of a velocity versus time graph is acceleration. All right, so those are our equations, our expressions for acceleration velocity as far as that is concerned and that's one example we've done there um, let me show you now our equations that we will be using for this chapter all right and they are as follows V is V naught plus AT, and this will be for X and also for Y. V, uh, v is V naught plus GT, where again G is minus 10 meters per second squared. We're assuming up is positive, down is negative, right is positive, left is negative. Right now, these are almost exactly the same. Uh, x would be x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared, all in the vertical direction. Y is y naught plus v naught t. Again, these are different. This is a vertical horizontal case. This is a vertical case plus one half g t squared. Uh, and then for here, v squared is v naught squared plus two a x. And for here, v squared is v naught squared plus two gy, all right? So those are our expressions 
for uh, horizontal direction, vertical direction. Here, A is either arbitrary, it could be zero. If you're moving at constant velocity, A is zero. So here you always have gravity in effect. That's the only effect we're gonna have for that. So that's the expressions there. And oh, let me do one example here. Okay. All right, uh, this is example two, two in the text. And all right, an example is, say we have uh, a plane trying to take off from a runway, right? X is 150 meters and plane will start here all very well and it wants to take off at this point of 150 meters because then you've got a big grass or something after that right and at this end say it needs a velocity of 30 meters per second which is about uh, 75 miles per hour using the conversion one meter per second is 2.24 meter miles per hour so that's about roughly about right and it can accelerate with at two meters per second squared all right question i would have then will it actually get to enough speed in this time to get to to take off or will it not have enough speed for liftoff? All right, so what do we know here? We know X is 150. We know A is two meters per second squared. We know what B needs to be. And since we're starting from rest, V naught is zero. All right, now in this case, we don't really care how long it takes what we need to know is whether it has enough speed here. So the one expression, when you're trying to do that, you're trying to find the simplest way. Sometimes it's two steps, sometimes it's one. But in this case, this would be the expression to use because uh, we can calculate everything because this needs to be at least 30 meters per second to answer this. So this is what it needs to be needs v to be that doesn't mean that actually is the answer so we'll see if that's enough all right so how we'll calculate this i'll go over to here so v <clears throat> would be v naught squared that's zero plus two times two i'm going to drop the units because it's easier to write and that would be times 150 and oh that's v squared so v squared would be uh four times 150 is 600 and that is roughly so v would be roughly 24 meters per second so not enough all right and since a plane generally has the same you know, acceleration regardless. I mean, we really probably can't change this because it's going at full power. What we would need to do is then, if you want to, is how long would it actually have to be to take off? So obviously 150 meters is not gonna be enough. So we're gonna need to solve then, in this case, uh, for X. Right, so 24 meters, so length being 150 goes only that fast. So let's put in an equation, solve it, put in what we know. All right, we need it to be 30 squared is zero squared plus two times two times X. All right, that would be 900 equals four X divided by four and X would be 225 meters. 
that's how long the runway would need to be to take off. And that's basically a calculation they do. All right, how long does it have to be uh, for it to take off? Uh, now again, this is flat. I mean, that's also why planes fly into the wind when they take off because it's a relative speed to the air that makes a difference. But that's not part of this problem. So that's, that's the equations of what we'll be using for this, this section, this chapter. And um, let me do, uh, yeah, I think we've got enough examples here. All right, so the rest of the chapter is pretty much using these expressions. And these are so, look at the review quiz questions, because the test will be similar to this, and using these parts, and again, using G for most of the problems, minus 10 meters per second squared. For lab, we sometimes use minus 9.8, usually just for the sense of accuracy and experimentation. That's what we do in lab two. And that is chapter two. Uh, I'll start on chapter three this weekend um, because the first test is only gonna be on chapter one and two, all right? So have a good day and we'll talk to you later and I will set up a Zoom time later this week for